This is a podcast from the Business Times. I can't stress this enough to people who ask me this question. So my personal mantra here is that if I'm going to spend my money, I need to make sure that my money works for me. It was almost a Miles utopia. It was almost as though I came from a Miles desert in Hong Kong where the Miles game was not very exciting and a bit bland and not exciting in terms of the amount that you could earn. How do we earn air miles while keeping our feet on the ground? Can we get those miles out of thin air? And which is the best way to do it? Welcome to Money Hacks, a podcast series by The Business Times, where we explore useful financial tips to help you on your money managing and wealth growing journey. I'm Howie Lim. And if you have feedback or an idea for a podcast episode, do get in touch, btpodcasts at sph.com.sg. And helping us out today, Tim Phillips from timtalksmoney.com and Mark Tan, Head of Commercial at Money Smart. I think there are a few strategies around miles, but personally for me, it boils down to three simple steps. Number one here is be on the right frequent flight in the program and try your best to fly with partner airlines as much as possible. I am a Singapore Airlines fan and Singapore Airlines is also part of the Star Alliance group. So whenever I fly, my first choice will of course be Singapore Airlines. But if there isn't any suitable flights, timings or prices, my next option would be to look for partner airlines like United, Thai Airways, Anna Lufansa. So this kind of ensures that even that you're not flying with SQ, you're still making your money worthwhile by getting miles that accumulate on one account. The second point here is applying for and using the right credit card. I can't stress this enough to people who ask me this question. So my personal mantra here is that if I'm going to spend my money, I need to make sure that my money works for me. This means that matching each purchase to the best card for the category, whether is it dining, groceries, travel, ensuring that every dollar spent maximizes the reward. The third thing is really here, it's sign up bonus. Banks occasionally run sign up bonus. Sometimes they are really great. For example, Standard Chartered Bank, 45,000 miles for new to bank customers with some TNCs, of course. Sign up bonus are often new to bank customers, but here's the tip. Most banks consider you new if you haven't held their card for the past 12 months. So if you cancel a card over a year ago, you might be eligible for these bonuses again. Yeah, so personally for me, uh, that's my three ways of doing it. But of course, there are other people that have different strategies and so forth. Sounds easy enough. Frequent flyer programs, partner airlines, use the right credit card and get more credit cards. Seems like it if you want to capitalize on those sign-up bonuses. How many credit cards does one need though? Here's Tim Phillips from TimTalksMoney.com. It's important to watch out for sneaky tactics from banks. They might try and take away certain points for renewing your annual fee. Again, an annual fee is something that you should not be paying ever. These credit card companies, they just whack it on your credit card statement every year. One fee per year, maybe it'll be $200, $250. It's more of a, hey, can I get away with this? Will this person pay this annual fee? And a lot of times people just say, okay, or they might not notice it, the truth is you do not need to pay this card, that card fee. There's so much competition out there in the Singapore credit card market that if they say you need to pay that fee, you just say, no, I'm going to go. I want to cancel the card and I'll go join another bank. And let's see what they say. Because there's even automated options out there for you to, to get your annual fee waived. It's almost like a joke. It's almost like a farce, right? Banks are out there to maximize profit for themselves and their shareholders. Great. More things to keep an eye on. Sneaky tactics from banks. But how many credit cards should we get in order to be successful in this miles game? Maybe Mark Tan from Money Smart will tell us. 9 to 12, it's, it's a lot to handle. I usually just have three cards and I maximize based on that three cards. It may seem a bit complicated and a lot of effort at first, but it's really all about simplifying your approach then getting used to it. It's also very challenging and overwhelming for me at the start. But once you really start to understand the key principles like tracking your spending, using the right card for the right purchases, it becomes second nature. And you also start to have a lot more confidence once you see miles and your points start to accumulate. So what feel like hard work initially will reward you with free flights, upgrades, travel perks, will otherwise cost you thousands of dollars. Think of it like any other financial investments. You start small, you get into the rhythm, then you watch your rewards grow. I always tell people the work up front is minimal compared to the value that you really truly unlock. Um, I'm not so sure about that. Anecdotally, that's all I hear. Way too much work, not worth the effort. Can't we hire someone to do it? You could. That would be expensive though. That might be a, 
a digital online sort of virtual PA. Yeah, that could be that could be done, but I assume you're probably going to be spending more more money on doing that. Fine. Let's see if we can get into the nuts and bolts of it with Tim Phillips from TimTalksMoney.com and Mark Tan from Money Smart. Lifting off for free or at least way cheaper than normal. But is it easier said than done? And is it still trendy to be doing this? More in a moment. If you've been a fan of the podcast Mark to Market, Wealth BT and Property BT, they are moving to a new listing, BT Correspondence. Look for episodes every Tuesday from October. All the insights and analysis and market trends, property, wealth, and soon mobility too. Powered by the Business Times journalism of Genevieve Kwa, Leslie Yi, Ben Paul, and Darren Wong. Because great reads should be heard. The BT Correspondence Channel. Find BT Correspondence wherever you listen to podcasts. And now, back to Money Hacks from the Business Times. Some time ago, I spoke to some travel bloggers about travel hacks to save money. They weren't really into the air miles thing. Jacqueline Xia's blog is the occasional traveler. If you want to do this, I have kind of tried this before because all my friends are like, yeah, you know, I've gotten this credit card and then I've managed to exchange and like go on suites in SIA, for example, just because of the number of miles they managed to accumulate. Of course, it sounds very enticing, but when you actually get down to doing it, it does take quite a lot of work. Perhaps the advent of budget travel and airlines has put a dampener on air miles accumulation enthusiasm. Here's Mark Tan from Money Smart. While budget travel has gained popularity, I don't think it has necessarily dampened the appeal of air miles accumulation. In fact, we have been seeing a surge in miles related credit card application on Money Smart in the past one year. Many travelers still see the value in accumulating miles for one major reason, right? Because miles makes premium cabins more affordable. With the right mouse strategy, you can access business class ticket at a fraction of the cost. This is extremely appealing for long haul flights where comfort becomes priority. I think another benefit of Air Miles Redemption is the ability to lock in miles for last minute bookings without worrying about such pricing. So the value of Air Miles is generally stable even as ticket price fluctuates. If I was feeling a bit more spontaneous and wanted to book a ticket to Bali next month, for example, the ticket will usually be more expensive because it's a last minute purchase, right? However, with Air Miles, I can kind of be assured that redemption costs stay consistent regardless of the timing. As airlines like SQ often offer additional opportunities through their programs like Spontaneous Escape, where you can redeem miles for flights to selected destination at 30% off. So this is really great for travelers who plan their trips on short notice. For those who really value long-term cost savings, flexibility, premium experience, and a potential for upgrade, Air Miles continue to be a valuable tool for smart travelers. Yeah, I think you would probably 15 minutes to half an hour every week to kind of like just make sure everything's in order. Obviously, you might monitor a bit more if you have a massive spending week or if you spend a lot in one week. But generally, if your spending is quite consistent, you wouldn't really need to track it so much. You would just update yourself every week to understand where you are on the caps. But I would say, you know, with these banks, you have to convert the bank points. So you get points and then you can actually convert them into miles. But miles isn't the only thing you can convert them into. I think it's the best value because that's how I spend it. And if you are someone who likes to travel and most people do, then you would probably redeem. But you can also redeem those bank points for other things like vouchers or other experiences on the rewards portal of these banks. A lot of banks offer this convenience, for example, American Express of saying, oh, we're just going to deposit it right into your Chris Flyer account. But the rate is not very good. So that's the thing. You're getting 1.1 miles per dollar, 1.2 miles per dollar on your American Express spend but it goes all into your account. So that's a convenience and it's free because you don't need to pay to convert. Wow. Tim Phillips from TimTalksMoney.com only spends 15 minutes a day keeping an eye on this stuff. That's not too bad. Not as bad as I thought it would be. What about our other expert, Mark Tan from Money Smart? It may seem complicated and a lot of effort at first, but it's really all about simplifying your approach and getting the hang of it. Um, it was also very challenging for me at the start, but once you understand the key principles like tracking your spending, using the right cards for the right purchase, it becomes second nature. 
I mean, I was into it in, in Hong Kong when I was there. And then I continued when I came here. It was almost a Miles utopia. It was almost as though I came from a Miles desert in Hong Kong where the Miles game was not very exciting and a bit bland and not exciting in terms of the amount that you could earn. But in coming here in Singapore, it's, it's very generous, I think, in terms of what they can award you. So I've been doing it for maybe seven years now. The amount of time that I spend on it isn't that much, but I've become accustomed to knowing what I'm doing and understanding the strategy and not really having to think so much about it. It's almost second nature, again, like riding a bike. If you do get it down and you get accustomed to it and you you get a grasp of it, then I don't think it's beyond anyone. It's almost like doing your own investing or doing your own finances. It's something you can do. It's just you need to educate yourself and, and spend a bit more time on it. And then once you do have it down, then it becomes a lot less time consuming. Uh, thanks, Tim Phillips from TimTalksMoney.com. Sounds like we should all be grateful we live here in Miles Utopia and not some Miles forsaken place like uh, the one he mentioned. Thanks to Mark Tan from Money Smart as well. Don't forget to send us an email if you have feedback or an episode idea. BT Podcasts at sph.com.sg. I'm Howie Lim, and this has been Money Hacks from the Business Times. This is a podcast by the Business Times. Find more BT podcasts at businesstimes.com.sg slash podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is meant to provide general information only. SPH Media accepts no liability for loss arising from any reliance on the podcast or use of third parties' products and services. Please consult professional advisors for independent advice.